Good Tuesday morning. Boomer out again today. He will be back tomorrow. We've got CeeLo in. We got Fleegs in. Eddie and I are here. And you got another frustrating Yankees loss and a really frustrated running back for the New York Giants. Good morning, Jerry. How are you? Yo, what's up, G? How are you? Doing okay. I'm trying to shake off a bit of a rough evening last night. Oh, the golf. Yeah. Oh, this. Oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. I don't know if you won or lost. Someone had some drinks. No, 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 no. Oh, no. That actually is not the reason why it was rough. Oh, because you lost. And what happened at my home afterwards. Uh Uh-oh. And by the way, uh, Stephen Waldron, can I just get uh, Stephen Waldron up here very quickly? We're not on. Oh, we're not on today? No. No, Not till 8 o'clock. Tottenham West Ham Friendly. Oh, that's right. I thought we were going off early. So anyway. That's the the next two. We got to. Oh, that's the next two. We got to shut this off. This is this giant blue CBS (laughs) sports screen in my face. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> was there a remote over here? I'm not going to uh, I got remotes here. Right here, right here, right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shut that thing off. Yes, oh, my I God. I don't know what you're uh, So, anyway, are we going to be on at all today? Oh, yeah, 8 o'clock. Oh, 8 o'clock. All right. So, I'm going to have to uh, tell the Save a people to turn on CBS Sports Network at eight? at 8 o'clock to see me wearing the T-shirt and also... Oh boy. Having the Save hat in By front of us. By the way, they just switched to the, uh, to the, the soccer. friendly we got it. if, if yep. you want to watch. That's fine. Okay. No, it's much better than that giant blue screen that I was staring at. Uh, so, yeah. Um, not only did we lose our match, we also lost the whole thing. And that's four in a row for Save Oh, boy. And we were actually playing well, my partner and I. And the guy we're playing against, a Save a bartender named Justin, hit three. Three twenty-five foot plus putts oh, in a row. On. In a Stop. row, one was thirty-five feet, and to have holes, not so you were going to win them, right? Not to win holes, wow. to have holes. That sucks. We had an eagle putt of fifteen feet. He had a birdie putt of thirty-five, and then we didn't hit our fifteen footer, and he buried a thirty-five. <laughs> Tap in for birdie. Yep. And then he goes from 35 feet to have you. Yep. That sucks. Yep. Yep. It hey, was good for him, but that stinks. Oh. Um, when you're playing competitively, that stinks. Yeah. Uh, by the way, whatever is on CBS Sports Network now is even more distracting than that blue screen. There is some sort of. Uh, what, what would you I don't, even I don't call know. it? I, it looks I don't, like a ceremony of yeah, some, I don't even some know. sort. I don't know. It's a really, really, really large man in paint. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's the proper thing to say, but I, I mean, I don't know. And all these people that are watching this are it's like an opening ceremony. Super confused yeah. about it. Uh, so anyway, all right. So not only do we lose, then we go back to the Portly where we're supposed to celebrate because the after party was at the Portly this year. We're not celebrating. It's we lose by three because it's a Ryder Cup situation. So okay, it's yep. thirty four and a half to thirty one and a half. And so you wound up losing. Yes, you we did. we they took two from us, and they make me announce it to everybody. <laughs> so the Sableen guys make me stand up on a bar and announce <laughs> that we lost. <laughs> then, oh, that's then funny. you're gonna love this part of it. So if things couldn't get bad enough at this point, and, and everybody's like, oh, but it's still a good day. I'm like, yeah, it's a good day, but this is four years in a row now you know, that this has happened. You want to win. You want to win. I've had enough of this. So I'm actually I'm talking to a guy who's got some insight on the Long Island serial killer. I'm talking to him in this intense conversation going back and forth, and my phone is just going off. like, bzz, 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 bzz. I'm like, oh, God, what, what is this? It's Gina. And she's telling me that it's 85 degrees in the house, upstairs in the house, and that the AC isn't working, and she doesn't know what to do, and it's because I didn't change the filters. <laughs> no, it's not. And I said, I said, listen, I'm not an HVAC guy, <laughs> but I'll tell you right now, it's not because we were a month late on changing the air filters. No, it's All not. All right? I know you'd love for this to be my fault. <laughs> Like, this would be the greatest moment of your life if this was my fault that it was 85 degrees in the house. So I, I leave the Portly. I go home. Not only is the AC not working, it's blowing straight heat really? out of the vents. Wow. Yeah. So because I live in the greatest blue-collar town in America, I happen to have across the street my best friend in the neighborhood who's a heating and air conditioning guy. Okay. 
Call him up at 9.30? Well, it was, it was that late, huh? Yeah. Call him up at 9.30? He walks over from across the street? Give me a screwdriver. Give me some pliers. Yeah. All right, let's go up into the attic. <laughs> Cutting stuff, moving stuff. All right, this is here, this is that. Apparently, the relay that identifies it was supposed to be heating or cooling was all screwed up, and it was reading that it needed heat, oh my and the gosh. backup heat came on. So he's sitting there, and and I said, hey, Gina, wasn't the filters, by the way, and HVAC guy's over here <laughs> cutting wires <laughs> like a bomb squad. <laughs> so he got the thing working, and it ended up cooling down. Well, and that's then, not so bad then. Yeah, but still, I mean, it was— it I was, just spent a fortune on a new whole new AC system. I thought that's where you were going. No, no, no. It could, could be. I mean, he just you, this is a guy who can fix anything. He's a MacGyver of yeah, air yeah. conditioning and heating units and boilers and all of that stuff. So it, it may it may need a system, but I mean, the fact that it was just panicking, it was 85 degrees, and then she's running around and Sabrina's up and she's panicking. Not it was a just, great finish to your day. No, it was not. Not a great finish. No, it, it, it was not. And I, and I just, there's just certain shots I'm not going to forget yesterday. It's just, it's just frustrating. Yeah, I hear you, just man. Just a frustrating day. Competitive golf is very frustrating because while you can play well, the other guy can play better. Yeah, I, and this guy, of course, he, he has a voice just like Gallo. It's like a rough voice, this guy, that right. the guy was hitting the putts, and he was like, I never do this. I swear I never do this. <laughs> so I call any of my friends right now. They'll, they'll say I, I, I four putt every time. And I'm like, oh, great. Well, most guys don't routinely make 25 footers, let alone three in a row. Three in a row. So. I mean, it just, we, we should have been up four. It, it was just sickening. It was yeah, sickening. That's bad luck on your part. It's sickening. Do you like generally playing, like when you go out with Boomer or just in events, do you like kind of putting, I don't mean $50 a hole, but do you like putting a couple dollars yeah. on a hole to make it a little more fun? Of course. Because yeah. I've been with people that are like, leave me alone. I just want to play my game. Others can't play without it. Yeah. I no, I I'm I'm totally into that. As long, I mean, twenty dollars at most. I mean, that's that's the the most amount of money that I have played for is is twenty dollars per not per right. hole, just per round. And in the beginning, I was just so bad it, it really didn't matter. But now the fact that you know I get strokes and play scrambles, yeah. whatever else. But yeah, so it, it sucks. So there. So um, here's you know. here's how crazy golf is. If I go back to it was right before Matthew was born, so I think it was '03. I belonged to a place called Glenwood Country Club in Oldbridge at the time. They've since uh, sold the property, land, whatever. It's it's now gone. But I was playing with a. I would go right from work overnight with Joe, and I would go right there, and there was a group of guys all between the ages of probably 50 and 85. No joke, and there were like probably 15, 16 of us, and we would always have the first four tee times starting at 7 a.m. So they would play for a quarter a hole, but all sorts of junk and, you know, greenies and sandies and all this other stuff. So it sounds like it wasn't much, but it could be. And they would cut your throat for a quarter. I mean, these guys were really into it. So I was having one of those days, best round I've ever had in my 30 years of playing golf. I shot an 83. I cleaned up. I made money that day. And I went home thinking, if I could do this every day, oh yeah, this is going to pay for itself. Right. Go back the next day. In the same group, the way it worked out, because we played with the same group each week, and then we switched the following week. Shot a 121 (laughs) on the same golf course with the same group and wound up losing more money than I had won the day before. Yep. Sounds about right. Crap. Sounds about right. So, anyway, congratulations to the Sayville Inn. And I'm uh, I'm wearing this uh, T-shirt reluctantly. But uh, they earned it. Yep, they earned it. Uh, As uh, Saquon Barkley says, it is what it is, right? As he tweeted out yesterday as the deadline was approaching and all the reports were hitting Twitter that they were not going to reach a long-term deal. And he is going to have to sign his franchise tender or sit out the season, which there's no way he will. Now, I don't know what he's going to end up doing. He's going to hold out a training camp to prove a point. I don't know what he's going to do. It sucks because apparently they're only like $1 or $2 million away and the Giants weren't going to cave on that. But I still would have signed the deal if I were him because, you know, the guaranteed money he would have had would have been guaranteed money. And the way that I guess him and his agent were looking at it was that if he plays on a franchise tag for two years in a row, it would have been more money guaranteed than what the Giants were offering. But this is a guy who's got a history of injury and has missed a lot of time. So I would not have rolled the dice. I would have signed the deal reluctantly and made sure that I had that money just in case anything happened this year because you know that's the first thing everybody's going to point to if he ends up getting hurt this year is you should have signed the deal because you would have guaranteed money next year. But 
it it sucks. The whole thing sucks, man. I mean, I and a lot of people wanted the Giants to just do what he wanted to, in good faith, and he's been a great Giant, and he's been the face of the team the last number of years, and Joe Shane and Brian Dable did not draft Saquon Barkley. They came from a place where they didn't have a high-profile running back, and they won with Josh Allen as the quarterback. They gave $40 million to Daniel Jones, and they said, screw it. We don't think you're as important as you do, and that's why we're here. Yeah, the whole thing. There's not a whole lot to say. I mean, I, you feel bad for him because he deserves more. He deserves a lot more, actually, in my mind. I think he deserves more, quite frankly, than, than the quarterback does. I mean, I think that's how important he is, and Daniel Jones is really good. I like Daniel Jones. I did when people thought he was never coming back. I thought he would have a decent career. But without that Saquon Barkley type of back, I don't know how good he is. Um you know, here's the thing with the whole running back situation. You want it to change? Here's when it'll change. When a team does this to a running back like Barkley and the next guy coming in isn't very good. And then you sit there and, and wonder what could have been. And then it has to happen again and again and again. And teams realize, you know what? We actually do need to value these guys. Like, I'll give you an example in Dallas. So they're going through the same thing. They cut Ezekiel Elliott. Elliott's still unemployed, kind of like um, Dalvin Cook is with Minnesota. He's unemployed, too. And the Cowboys decide they're going to go with Tony Pollard. Now, they do the whole franchise tag thing with him as well. He got injured in the playoffs mm-hmm. last year, as you remember. Tony Pollard in spurts was really good. Is he going to be? And Ezekiel Elliott isn't the same, and it's not the same with Barkley because I feel like Elliott's got a little more wear and tear. It's a little bit different um, in terms of Elliott, and I think they definitely had the the right mentality to move on. But my point is... What you had in Elliott for a period of five or six years, I think they just assume you're going to get the same production out of Tony Pollard. I don't know that to be the case when he's your every down back. I have no idea. If he's not, you'll start to learn that maybe we need to value guys a little bit more. And and Elliott did get paid, so it's not the best example. But my point is the next guy isn't always the guy. And until that starts happening more and more, I think this is the way we're going. And it stinks to be a running back. Um You know, if Saquon Barkley goes out there this year and has, let's say, another type of 18, let's say 1,700, 1,800 combined yards, he runs for 1,200, receives four, 500 yards like he did last year, how is that not of value? Like, oh. I, I don't understand. Well, I mean, I think I think it is, and the value is that, all right, we had him on a one-year deal. If he stays healthy and has another great year, then we have him on a one-year deal. If every franchise could give their running back a one-year deal every single year, they would do it. That's what they would do. So the, the value is not in just the production. The value is that you're not locked into that guy when or if he starts to break down later in his career. I mean, if you could have... You could have every GM candidly, and maybe not even candidly, or not even uh, like at a bar talking to you. I mean, maybe even like publicly, they would say, if I could put a running back on a one year deal every single year from when he gets drafted till 30 years old, we would do it. And that's not the same way they would do it with quarterbacks because they want to make sure that that guy is is always there and keeping that guy happy and everything else. And it's the, 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 the straw that stirs the drink. But. I mean, it, it's it, he's not going to he's not going to get a long term deal next year either. No, he's not. He's getting older. I mean, so that's no. why to me it was like take this deal and then try to hit every incentive in the deal and then make it the best contract that it could possibly be, even though it's not what you want. No, I, the whole that's thing, what I would have done. The whole thing just stinks. It really does. The whole system stinks. The way it's set up, it stinks. The fact that a guy coming out of college can make more than this guy stinks. Uh, the fact that quarterbacks are making three and four times more money than really good running backs stinks. I I don't know what to say other than don't be a running back. I mean, really, let's just get rid of the position then, and we'll just line everybody up, and, and you're going to come out of the backfield, but you're really going to be a wide receiver. Don't even hand the ball off anymore. Matter of fact, if I'm Saquon Barkley, I don't want to hand off. Don't give me the ball. I want to go out in the flat. I don't want to worry about my future and get hurt. Don't yeah. hand me the ball off. Well, I mean, that, so that's the next part of this is how does he handle it now? He'll handle it like a pro because he is. No, but okay. But does he hold out training camp? Does what he... is that? He could. What does that do? Nothing. This is not, you know, I remember, and I hate to go back to the Cowboys, but it's a great example. I remember when Emmett Smith held out, um, what was it, 93 or 95? I forget what year it was. And he missed the first two games. Now it was a different NFL. Because back then, you were still running the ball 35 times a game. 
Um, and the premier, the primary back got 30 carries and the backup would get a few. And so he sat out the first two and the Cowboys lost the first two games. And it was like, holy crap, we better do something. That is not the case right now. I mean, I, I don't see that. As this situation, he holds out. What is that going to, what's going to happen then? Nothing. I mean, Zil- it's, zilch. Like it, it's basically a pride thing at this point, And it's the only thing he can control is that, is to not sign the tag. Because he's really, if you don't sign the tag, you're really, you're not under contract. So you could hold out and not get fined because you're. You don't you're, belong to anybody. Right, exactly. So he, he could do that if he wanted to. I mean, I, I really think that. Him not signing this deal was more pride than anything else. I mean, it was the smart thing to do to sign it. I mean, there's, there's really no benefit to not signing the deal yesterday that the Giants had offered. So maybe he just the same thing. It's just a pride thing and doesn't want them to win. And the only way that he can control that is screwing with them and knowing that he's a big part of the team and then not showing up to practice. Except at the end of the day, they are going to win because he is going to be there. I, I just don't buy, I don't believe for a second that he's going to sit out the season. That's the only no. way. But that's it. I mean, that's the only way you want to talk about respect or pride, then don't show up at all. Because at some point, if you're not going to do that, at some point you are going to end up walking into those doors and onto that field with that deal, with this one-year tender deal that he's going to have. And uh, you, all you're doing is prolonging the inevitable as opposed to just walking in next week at training camp and be like, it is what it is. Let's just go play. Let's go win. You know, I, listen, I know because it's sports, it's different. At the, I know it's still $10 million. I'm sure someone out there right now is driving around saying, hey, jackass, it's $10 million to play football. I get that. But in the grand scheme of the NFL and what guys make, the deal stinks. Um, the only thing he can do in my mind is skip the season or just report. Anything yeah. in between is nothing. And there and the precedent of a running back skipping a season because he felt like he was unfairly given an offer was one of the bigger disasters we've ever seen in Le'Veon Bell, whose career was essentially ruined because of that. Let me ask you this though, because I've thought a lot about that over the last because of all this, you know, all this uh, Saquon Barkley stuff the last couple of days. And everybody brings up Le'Veon Bell, and rightly so, because he skipped the year. He did go get the deal with the Jets. Doesn't Barkley seem to be a little bit different, though, from the standpoint of it felt like, I don't know Le'Veon Bell, never talked to him, never met him, but just watching outside, looking in, it seemed like a guy that got his contract and was content, didn't like the way he was being used by the Jets, and kind of eh, checked out a little bit. Do you get the sense that if a kid like Barkley sat out for a better deal and got that better deal next year, that there would be any lag in his performance? I, I didn't think that Le'Veon Bell was going to be that guy, but he ended up being that guy. So I could sit here and say, no, I don't think that Saquon Barkley would be that guy. But if you go back to Le'Veon Bell, that guy was as tough as nails. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was unbelievable how much he was being used. And he just, he was always on the field. He was hurtling guys. He was doing all these amazing things. And I never, ever, ever thought that he would just get the money and quit. I really didn't. So, uh, of course, I could sit here now and say that Saquon wouldn't do it because of the type of guy that he is. But, I mean, I was dead wrong on what Le'Veon Bell was at that yeah. point, too. But, I mean, I so even if he, if, he, if he sits out the season, can the Giants tag him again? Probably not, right? Because he never signed the original tag and he still wouldn't be under contract. That I would have to check. That I don't know the answer. Because Le'Veon Bell, was he tagged just the one time? And then sat out. And then I guess at that point, the Steelers could have tagged him and maybe didn't, or they weren't allowed to tag him again because he never signed the original tag. That's something I got to look up because then the Giants could, I mean, if he sits out the season and the Giants are like, okay, screw it. You sit out the season, go ahead and get what you need in free agency elsewhere and see what happens. Or they end up tagging him again just to mess with him. Right. And then the other thing is too, uh, and this is where the risk comes from the players, which is, again, why I think he'll be there uh, next week or at some point in August, is even if you did that, is anybody going to give him a long-term deal? No. All right, Boomer and Geo with Jerry in for Boomer this morning. 